Welcome to 2021. Hard to imagine that we are at that juncture already, walking into a new year. And as you watch this broadcast, it's the first message in a whole brand new series of messages that will be going on all during January and into February uh, that is entitled Just in Time, Capturing the Moments That Matter the Most in Life. And today, as you think about that, we all look back and reflect on different moments that stand out to us as profound and special uh, anointed by God in, in unique ways. And I think about that 15 plus years ago when One Heart Church was started. There were moments that you could just tell that they were, they were from God. He had a plan in store. He wanted to do something amazing in all of our lives. And think about all those who have walked faithfully with us uh, in this particular chapter of life. These 15 years have gone by so fast, but they all started with some very special moments. And today I want you to think about what if this year starts with a special moment for you? What if you begin 2021 uh, with a very clear focus on experiencing God's best for your life. The truth is, if you are willing to and your heart's committed to it, then you're going to experience something that is absolutely amazing. And today we look at what it means to look closely at our own hearts because the truth is we don't need to look at somebody else's heart. We need to look at our own. And uh, we, we find ourselves focus on Matthew chapter 26. If you have your Bible, you want to open that text. And I also want to challenge you to get a piece of bread or a cracker and some juice or water and be prepared at the end of the service because just like we're having communion at church in the room uh, this coming Sunday, uh, I want you to have it in your home uh, as a part of your special moment, all right? So when you think about watching over your heart, Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verse 23 is probably the key verse that challenges all of us because Solomon said it this way, watch over your heart with all diligence for from it flow the issues of life. Watch over your heart with all diligence. And so I want you to think about how important it is that we watch over our hearts and we experience what God has in store for each one of us as we do that. Now, when you think about that, I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about it and ponder it uh, throughout the message because uh, the, the question is how often do you look closely at your own heart? I mean, how often do you go, look, I need to look inside here and see if there's anything uh, that he has in store for me. It's interesting, today, uh, today, early morning, I woke up and it was like the Lord was speaking to me. It was one of those special moments. And uh, it stood out to me, it's so significant because I could just hear the Lord speaking and he was saying very distinctive things to my heart. And, and uh, uh, I jumped out of bed quickly. I came downstairs at, at my house and started writing down notes and I have, I have all those notes uh, to meditate on and think through uh, as, as I watched this, um, this year unfold, and I have no doubt that he was speaking in my heart. And uh, what I want you to realize is this, that the Bible, the Bible tells us, uh, or uses in the, in the Greek, in the New Testament, a couple of different words for time. Uh, one of those is chronos, and the other is kairos. Uh, chronos has to do with the, uh, quali uh, the quantity of time, and kairos has to do with the quality of time. When you look at that word deeply, and we're going to look at it in lots of different angles uh, during the next number of weeks, uh, but I want you to think about these three, key, these three key words, right, critical, opportune. Right, critical, opportune. Uh, because what you'll discover is this, at the right time, at a critical moment, and the opportunity is placed before you, you have a kairos moment that you can experience. And uh, when you do, it just sets your heart in motion to change your life forever. So that you look at that word, the word time, and, and uh, it's, it's 86 uh, different times or so it's used in the New Testament to link us to those quality moments that are unique and special. And it's very, very affirming in that it, it also uh, is used uh, often to connect into prophecy and the second coming and future events. And so it tells you something. God has in store some very special moments for all of us, and we just have to be willing to experience those. Now, if you'll think about it just for a moment, look if you would uh, in Matthew chapter 26, and look if you would with me just for a moment uh, at verse 18, all right? Because I want to show you something that helps you understand the concept we're going to look at. Because remember, just in time, you capture the moment so that you can experience what God intends for you, all right? You don't want to miss it. Judas missed it completely. You'll see that as this story unfolds. But look at verse 18 just for a moment. Notice what it says. Go, Jesus given instruction to the disciples. Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I am to keep the Passover at your house of my disciples. Now, when they went and sought this guy out, uh, when they conveyed this message, they used the word kairos, 
um, which helped the person understand that this was just wasn't on a long wasn't a long get together to be able to celebrate a communion. It was a specific moment that was right, critical, and opportune for all their lives, and also for him because in obedience he opened up his upper room. He opened up. Uh, what he owned in order to bless others. And so uh, it's interesting because Jesus said the teacher, the teacher is coming. And uh, it was very clear and very understandable that this was Jesus who was going to come and teach and make a difference. Now, when you look at Matthew chapter 26, you'll realize it's beginning in verse 14. Look at it with me just for a moment because I want you to think through something with me uh, as we uh, get ready to spend a few moments uh, in communion uh, just by way of reflection at the end of this message. So I want you to just think about those elements what they mean and how they, uh, have, how, they, how they have an effect on your life and on mine. Look if you would, um, verse 14, and let's look on for just, then, then one of those 12, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him. From then on, he began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And back at verse 18, go to the city, uh, tell them the teacher's coming, uh, and that my time, my, my kairos is, is near. Look on if you would. Verse 19, the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with 12, 12 disciples. As they were eating, he said, truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, He who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is to go, just as written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man, man is betrayed. It would have been good for the man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. And Jesus said to him, You have said it to yourself. I want you to imagine for a moment that uh, this moment, this, this Kairos moment, think about it for a second. On one hand, are the disciples realizing that Jesus has just said, this is none of your moment like no other at that right critical moment. And on the other hand, you see Judas who is looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus, an opportunity to walk away, an opportunity to choose something less. And today I want us to look at this passage in, in light of that because I want you to see there's an evaluation process that we can use to look at our hearts. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way that we can look inside our own hearts to make sure we understand what it is that God's saying to us. And so I hope that you will listen closely, make clear application, and at the end, uh, in your own home, take a moment and take those elements and experience Jesus. Experience a Kairos moment from God. The first thing I want you to show you is that there's there's a preparation, and um, you know in verse 14 through 16 you realize that 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 here here is Judas, and um, what is he doing? I mean Judas Judas is choosing to sin uh, and betray the Lord. And what I want you to see today is this: when it comes to our moments that come from God, we have to identify any sins that will steal our moments. Anything that will cause us to not experience what it is that God has in store for us. So today, as you think about that, be wise, be wise, and look inside your own heart and say, Lord, is there anything that's in me that would keep me from the everlasting way? Anything in me that would keep me from not being prepared the way you would intend so that when my Kairos moments come, I can experience the best that God has for me. My, my prayer is you're prepared and you're already preparing your heart right now for this. Which, by the way, I was telling you about waking up early this morning and getting, uh, getting some clear insights from God. And interesting what, um, what I heard because I heard God telling me that there are specific insights he was going to share uh, with my heart, and he did. Uh, there are certain investments I should make, and I'm not talking about in any way related to the stock market or anything like that. It, investments that have spiritual consequence which are far more valuable uh, than anything I could ever imagine uh, in a financial world. And then the other thing was that, that there were certain initiatives that I needed to, to put in play for my own life 
uh, and for our ministry. And I tell you what, I want you to think about it for a second in your own life. What, what would happen if God gave you some insights, he showed you how to invest your life in other people, and out of that, you took, you took initiative. You said, you know what, I'm going to do that. I can tell you what would happen. You'd get prepared to experience a lot of Kairos moments that God had in store for you. And you're going to see this uh, as we unfold in numerous texts, numerous texts. Um, you think about Galatians where it says, you know, don't grow weary in doing good for it. In due time, in Kairos moments, you'll reap if you don't walk away. All right? Uh, think about that in Galatians 6. In other places, we're going we're to see lots of those. I think that will be helpful to you. So let's kind of walk through this, this process, don't we? First of all, there's preparation. Secondly, you got to understand the setting uh, that, that Jesus called them to. He called them to a unique place at a unique time in order to, to do something special in the heart. And listen, I can't think of a more unique place than in your home if you are watching this uh, to take just a moment and to reflect and to use those elements to cause your heart to zero in on what it is that God is saying to you. And so when you think about setting, and you got to recognize something. God has places that he wants us to be for our hearts to commune with him. He has lots of places, and it is not just here in, uh, in the church building. It's in other places. He has a setting. There, is, there are places that validate his purpose because we are committed to those kairos moments that come our way, those right critical opportune moments that God has in store for us. Third thing I want you to see, so you prepare, you know where you're going to be, and the third thing you see is it. It's the contrast that transpires in the middle of this story, all right? Because what is the contrast? Uh, you got on one side, you got, you got Judas who, uh, it's a failure to seize his moment. I mean, he doesn't grab it. Uh, it led to betrayal and it, it led to pain and heartache and obviously the demise of Judas' life. And so what I want you to see today is this. Think about the contrast that can occur uh, in each one of our hearts as we come to different moments. And in those moments, we choose. We choose either to experience what he has for us or to miss it completely. And Judas, you think about it for a moment, Judas, before Jesus ever told him to go uh, get the upper room ready to experience uh, the Last Supper, before any of that transpired, Judas had already made a choice. He was looking, and it's interesting because the Bible says in verse 16, he was looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. Here's what I want you to understand. There's never a good opportunity to walk away from your faith, to walk away from what you believe, to walk away from the word, to walk away from Jesus. It's just no good opportunity. And so the contrast here is, and that's why the disciples start asking questions. They start asking, is it us or who is it? And what he's trying to get across here is it that this, this contrast, uh, you can be right in the middle of your moment and somebody else can be completely away from God, completely disconnected from God. Don't let, don't let someone else's choice steal your Cairo's moment. Don't let it happen. All right? And so uh, that's the contrast. So think about it for a second. You, you prepare. You understand that there are places that God has for you. There's a contrast that occurs. And then out of that, there's a call that Jesus makes. Look, if you would, verse 26. And I want to show you the call that Jesus made, which is to surrender. It's all about surrender. And what is he asking everyone to do? To surrender to his greater purpose. All right? Look at him, if you would. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread. And after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of this vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. All right? And I, you can't miss the, the last part of verse 30 there. If you look at it, notice what he says there. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. In other words, can you imagine... Can you imagine the call that is there to surrender? I mean, Jesus, he says, there are these two elements, and they, they, both of them represent something very significant. His broken body, his shed blood, that allows us to have a Kairos moment, uh, which is certainly, when we come to Jesus, it's definitely a Kairos moment, because when we give our heart to him, he changes our lives forever. All right, so think about this, because I want you to, to think through this. 
Um, we began our message by asking the question, how often do you look close at your heart? Today, I want to ask you, will you look close at your heart today? And I mentioned to you that you would take uh, two elements and have those available uh, to be able to experience. Um, and it, it, uh, it's symbolic. Both these things are symbols of what it is that, that, that Jesus wants us to do. And so uh, I want to encourage you uh, that in the quietness as I pray, that you take that bread or cracker and you take uh, that juice or water and you drink it and remember what he has done for you because that's what he was, Jesus was saying, the next time you're going to do this, it's going to be my Father's kingdom. I mean, there's just something special about the opportune moments God puts before us. And today, as you think about that, there's a right critical moment for you to experience him. And that's why I call you to your table in your home uh, to experience God's very best for your life. And so uh, as you think about that, uh, let it be an opportunity to experience Jesus. Let it be a Kairos moment for you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the way you work in our lives. Thank you for the blessing of being able to celebrate Jesus today. We thank you, Lord, that we have these moments where we look closely at our own hearts because just in time you capture us and you lead us to experience you. So, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name you bless, encourage, watch over, and motivate every person who's watching this message today. May they, as they take these elements... May they simply say, Lord, I do it as you have commanded. And as they take those elements, may they remember what you have done for them. Lord, you are, you are the one who gives us moments that we capture because you are present in our life. Bless us, Lord, to experience you in a new and living, powerful way in 2021. We give this to you in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I hope you've had a sweet time. Uh, in your home. And obviously, we're still cautious as we continue to proceed through what's transpiring with uh, COVID-19. And at the same time, we continue to uh, hold our worship services and do our live stream uh, every week in order to encourage those who have come our way. And we are so blessed that you are part of our family. I hope you're encouraged by this message today. May you have a great new year. May it be, be one of those that you look back at and say, Lord, I thank you that you carried us through this and now you move us forward. Watch over your heart. For from it, with all diligence, for from it flow all the issues of life. Today, we look at our own hearts and we move forward. God bless you. Have an amazing, powerful, and meaningful week as this new year unfolds for you.